Patreon member shout out. She wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts, she's cheer captain and I'm on the bleachers, dreaming about the day that we wake up and find that what you're looking for has been here the whole time. Hey guys, how's it going? It is I, the real Randy Chavez. I'm coming at you today with a VV Omi update video. Guys, if you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. I love you all. So sorry, but you know I'm leaving it in for old school people that like that type of stuff. Everyone say hello to Dashi. Hello, Dashi. And uh, all right, so before we get started, I'm a little bit tired today. Excuse the appearance. Shout out to Joy Roquejo for making me this shirt. This is great. Ada Lord, Randy Chavez on the back. Um, I did spend most of the day with Steph Santana and Justin Pierce, the two people that used to work at Disney, Disney aficionados. Uh, a bunch of crazy kids with a whole lot of energy, so I'm quite tired. But we had. Uh, a couple of live streams today, or yesterday. One was during the morning for the Golden uh, golden Moments drops. That was really fun. A lot of news out of that came out that uh, Akomi, or Vivi grossed over $3 million just on the drop alone. And again, that is grossing money, at least from the drop, drop that it was spent. And then there was a total of over $1 billion Omi burnt. Thank you. Shout out to Puddin' Cheeks, who uh, has been doing those updates on the spreadsheet. In fact, going pretty deep into that, we can see that over the last seven days, if we go from, you know, from the 19th, not including the 20th here, we have had three days where we've had $1 million or over go into the app. Go the last eight days that we've had four, about half of the days we've had $1 million or over going into the app. We currently had um, two days over the last seven that had over 1 billion Omi burn. On the 13th, that was Pixar, we burned $3.9 million worth of gems. And on the 19th, we also burned, I'm sorry, not of gems, of Omi. We burned on the 19th, $3.6 million worth of, Omi, uh, worth of Omi. So we about 3 million was on the drop. And then the rest of it, the extra $600,000 that were spent were most likely between fees and all that. So if you actually go and look at the metadata, if you look at the blockchain, you and again, Puddin' Cheeks does this very well for us says that the total gems bought since the inception of the app were 297 million. So almost at that 300 million mark, we should breach that within the next couple of days. And about $177 million uh, were spent in the app, leaving about 120 million gems inside the app. So I figure if even 90% of people uh, or 90% of that was waiting to cash out, which does seem like a very high number, um, that would leave us with about $12 million ready to spend. And what I do mean by that is that people have sold stuff, they have gems, they're ready to cash out for MTL. Even if 90% of that were to happen, again, you still have $12 million in the app ready to go. So a lot of people who are saying, oh, they're uh, what they're doing is they're flooding this with uh, Disney Golden Moments. They're doing this, doing that. So I did have a talk with Steph Santano and her uh, sister Susan that we, are, we went through a bunch of the Disney Facebook pages, uh, a bunch of the sellers pages, which a lot of people, uh, if you don't know Disney people, they typically don't do anything without posting it. It's like uh, people that work out that go to the gym. Oh yeah, getting my sets in for the day. You know, they usually post about it. Uh, so as a as an example, I'll show you guys something. I obviously won't give out the name, but here's the photo that comes along with this Facebook post saying, I don't ever do this, but I have to say, I don't understand people's thinking sometimes. And basically it's about uh, how close that person was to the car. So again, uh, after we had talking about it, she had messaged me saying, see, this is exactly what Disney people do. They can't not do anything without saying something about it, or at least posting about it. And that being said, there is nobody posting on these Disney uh, Facebook apps, like on their on their seller apps, on their marketplaces. Nobody's posting Vivi there. Why? I think there is a little bit of a conspiracy that Disney is trying to silence certain things. Like if anyone remembers the alligator and the kid, something that happened, that family never sued Disney. It just happened to be hush hush. Disney probably kind of paid them off. Now, I'm not saying that Disney is going to all these major news networks and telling them not to do anything, but I would that does kind of line up with the theory here. Why are only things like Star Wars uh, newsnet.com the only ones posting about Disney Golden Moments? Why are these random websites that really nobody's ever heard of, they're the only ones posting about it? Just probably because the bigger ones, it might seem that Disney is saying, oh, hey, we two reasons. They don't want to advertise empty shelves. They don't want to deal with the Karens that are on there that are saying, Oh, I didn't get one on the drop. Let me call and complain. There are <laughs> examples of people posting that they are waiting six hours on the phone to talk to someone, whether it be reservations, whether it be to add something. And not that you couldn't just do that online. I don't know the reasons why they wouldn't do that. But all I'm trying to say is that uh, Disney might be planning for something huge. They might be waiting until uh, 
we don't sell out each drop in, again, under one second. This wasn't just a small thing. This was 50,000 items. It wasn't a comic book that is 30,000 items and $7. No, these were $60 each. A lot of people made a lot of money today between trading, buying and selling, all that good stuff. So moving on here. We do have a couple of notes and posts from VV saying thanks for all the feedback regarding on <laughs> I'm sorry, regarding ongoing issues with the server load and security requirements. Errors for some users, uh, the team continues to work through it, but we full, uh, fully understand that words are not nearly enough. We understand your frustrations and know we need to do better. So be advised, guys, the security requirements that I've had uh, as well, all I did was I uninstalled and then reinstalled the app. Worked like a charm. I was able to get back in. The server load, for me, I've had that on drops where it says, oh, uh, server load is too heavy, and that's it. And I just, you know, we can't get it. Um, that is probably just because we have hundreds of thousands of people clicking, you know, buy now at the same exact time. I don't typically see it any times other than buys. But again, that's just my opinion there. Um, I don't actually know. But again, that's just where I've seen it. But again, they say, we understand your frustrations. We know we need to do better. For the most part, I think that really is just some bugs in the app that they might need to fix. And the uh, the servers in general, if the servers are under heavy load, they just might need to update them or get more of them, give or take. Again, I don't exactly know 100% of what the issues is. I assume it is a bit more complicated than that. But again, they do hear us. They go on to say, in most cases, these issues can be resolved by resetting your uh, modem slash router and making sure your phone is running on the latest OS. Uh, plus the latest version of the app, uninstall, reinstall if necessary, like I said. If this if this doesn't help, please submit a support ticket at help.bv.me slash submit a support ticket. Um, and the last one is, as for other big ticket items, we're all patiently waiting for updates that will be given uh, in David and Dan's video coming early next week, so probably by Tuesday or Wednesday. Again, thank you for your ongoing patience as we work to make VV a better, more fulfilling digital collectible experience. <laughs> Not too long after that, uh, they had come out with the full, uh, with the full medium article for Electra. Uh, there were tons of memes about her, and I mean like actual people doing some face rendering so that she can sing "Let It Go," those sing different things. Uh, I'll show you a tweet about it real quick. I can't actually play this with sound because that will get me demonetized. But when you have "Let Let It Go," I will rise like break of dawn. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you could picture her mouthing the words to let it go or apusti isabud, whatever language you listen to it in. Uh, shout out to John uh, at J-A-H-N-L-I, <laughs> blaming Granola Warf Warfare for it, uh, for this rendition, which is very beautiful. Again, I think people really didn't like her because of the way that she looked for whatever reason. Um, she's brown. No, I'm joking. Uh, for whatever reason, I didn't like the way she looked, whether it's because the face was contorted weird or the curvature was weird on the body. Either way, I think this will become an actual meme. It kind of already has. And people will be like, I'm going to buy it just for the lols. Just because if anyone remembers that scene in uh, Planet of the Apes, where he's like, you're just so damned ugly. <laughs> I think that might be it. Uh, so something to be curious of, that this does have the same amount for the rarities as Black Panther. Like the secret rare has 2,800, the same as Black Panther. But be advised that this does not have an ultra rare. It has a rare, a common, and an uncommon. This is a first appearance, but there is no ultra rare. There's only the secret rare. So I think what they're doing is they're trying to play around with this, saying, well, maybe the common, uncommon, even close to the rare, might be at retail or probably below. What they're probably doing is this is like their chase card. This is their chase thing. Um, also for medium article, this is not actually what it's going to look like. Um, that's going to be the animations. But for medium, they tend to have to do something a little bit they have to compress the files a bit. What it is going to look like, you can see on their Instagram. Their Instagram, it does look much better. Now, that being said, is this still exactly what people want? Maybe, maybe not. Um, a lot of people were really going at her. But again, that was before the memes with her singing. So who knows? At the end of the day, it is a $50 blind box. Um, I think if you get the secret rare, you could sell it for a decent amount. If you don't, you might lose a little bit of money. But again, that's just <laughs> that's just, uh, that's just me here. So moving on after that, we do have some more things from Vivi going on. There was a question by somebody saying that they came here to comment that they never address NFT directly, but always add digital collectible when they're initiating the convo. Vivi Digital Collectibles does respond that we use digital collectible and NFT interchangeably. Collectible is more in the spirit of who we are, but these that does, but these that doesn't mean I don't know what the, this is a weird sentence, uh, but these that doesn't mean these are not NFTs by definition. So basically, they're saying that. 
yes, just because they use digital collectible, because they are in the collecting game, doesn't mean that they're not NFTs. Obviously, they are. They're minted on two different blockchains, more NFTs than anyone else. Kind of like, I forget what comic book that is, where uh, everyone's turning into like the Joker, and um, Batman goes to Arkham and is like, no, I know the Joker's in there. And then he says, oh, I'm more Joker than the Joker ever was. Or maybe that was before he goes to the Arkham. I, I, either way, these are more NFTs than anyone, anyone else because they are minted on two blockchains, which is pretty interesting. Um, so after the feedbacks and all that, they were just talking about uh, how long before it drops do you prefer a reminder tweet? I chose about 15 minutes. A lot of other people chose the initial 30 minutes. 30 minutes is just, I guess, what people are used to. People don't like, they are creatures of habit. They don't really like change, so that might be why. But they are fielding other things just to see what we might like more, which again, I'm very bullish on. Moving on to a couple of Alex tweets, trying to keep the peace. There was a couple of people that, for whatever reason, they do thrive on conflict, trying to uh, say that Trevor leaving was, um, you know, a, a spat between uh, people or whatever. But no, again, on my particular um, point of view, it seems like both parties had left very positively with each other. And Reverend Alex G does come to kind of Trevor's defense here saying, listen, I did not deny Trevor's involvement in making um, in his contributions to the company, just said that he didn't actually make some of the collectibles. The studios are the ones that make the collectibles, but Trevor does everything that he mentions above in his previous tweet, but they do have new producers in place. That's the difference between producers and studios. Again, Alex is trying to ward off any bad feelings, so good on him on that. Moving on. Playing a little bit of undercover cop here was Getsy, known as at VV Getsy, uh, talking about things uh, referencing bots, and then there was an account that says bot VV drops market snipe, uh, says like, oh, do you need a bot? It's like, yeah, how do I get a bot? And it says DM me. And then he obviously screenshots it, posts it, tags Alex in it and says like, hey, can you handle this? Alex, of course, says yes, absolutely. Getsy says thanks. Reverend Alex G says thank you just for that. Again, them just trying to get the bots under control. How, this is probably one of the many ways they're getting bots under control. I haven't seen, me personally, I haven't seen as many bots over in the marketplace, I do think those are dwindling. I think it is because of things like these. Again, just a little positivity for the day moving forward. Moving on to the intermingling of our family and the HRO family. Gary O at 1234CA3 on Twitter, like I have over here, says that, quote, well, this sold out quick. Glad I got a box. Went back for a second and bam, the box works out to 70 cents a card slash NFT. At Real Randy Chavez talks with Hello K about them. And thanks to at Biscuits5 for telling me about them. End quote. And they were talking about the um, HRO packs, which again, they do seem to be sold out. So good on them for doing that. Again, it does. Uh, when I did talk to Hello K, it did seem like HRO because they've been in development for like five years. They do have a little bit of a head start on VB because they didn't have, you know, hundreds of thousands or now millions of people uh, really battering the network, really saying like, oh, hey, there's a bug here. There's a bug there. They just got to work on that. So that is why they do have a couple things that are ahead of us. Will they keep growing? Absolutely. Uh, will they take market share? Absolutely. Are they a threat to a Comey? Absolutely not. There is more than enough space. I have seen a bunch of people say like, oh guys, everyone's getting into HRO. Everyone's leaving Vivi. A lot of people that are getting into HRO are from Vivi, but I don't really see anybody selling all of their stuff for HRO things. I think a lot of people that are continuing to hodl Vivi, that are continuing to maybe take some profit here and there, has nothing to do with the fact that Again, people get paid either every week or every two weeks. They're going to take that money. They're going to go to other investments if they think they are either over leveraged or they have enough into any one investment like a Comey, whether it's Omi or Vivi. Again, I'm more focused on the Omi aspects, but other people more on Vivi. Uh, I think that HRO doing a really good thing and having a really good job if they keep their people happy will be really good for the space. And again, when you have someone as smart as Hello K saying, yeah, I passed on Recur, I passed on this, passed on that, but they look at HRO and think this is a really solid project. Seems to me that, again, follow smart money, see where it goes. Um, I haven't had any of these yet. Maybe in the next month or so after I get the uh, tax thing all taken care of, then I'll probably be able to start investing more. HRO sounds good. More VV NFTs, hopefully, if the market stays down. If it does, great. If not, no big deal. I'll be able to still stack as many as I can. Uh, one more thing. Speaking of stacking and golden moments and things like that, there was a lot of people that say, hey, what about this marketplace? You know, we're down a lot. You know, if you if you bought in January, you lost a lot of money. Well, you really only lose money if you sell and lock in those losses. But for the most part, if you bought, let's say, Elsa, 
which was about, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars in November. And she had spiked to well over 4K, I think over 5K at some point in January and is down to about 1100 now. I think somebody got one for $1,000 today or yesterday, depending on when you're watching this, on March 19th. So yeah, lost over 75% of her value, but at the same time is also up 400% on where she was in November. So you do have to take the good with the bad. When in doubt, just zoom out. We are still very, very early here. Again, what I mentioned before with Disney, seems to me like they uh, want to keep things suppressed a little bit, at least for as long as I can, again, right now. So uh, also, I did get a couple of more people in today. Again, the um, what I had had... Uh, Seventy, who had uh, invited me over to her family's. Again, also, for you that do not know, we are cousins. We're actually related. Not just a random person like the, I, that I messaged. Hey, do you uh, like Disney? So do I. Come on my podcast. So we have known each other for quite a long time. Um, her dad's actually getting in. So a lot of people that, again, they talk a lot. They go get their family in. They get their friends in. We are still growing very, very rapidly. I think from last week to this week, there was another 5,000 people that had followed Vivi on Twitter. Again, really heckin' awesome. Uh, not including a bunch of people that are going on the app every single day that maybe don't have Twitter. Maybe they have Discord, or maybe they have Instagram, or they don't have social media at all. Anyway, that's it for me. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Comment's good for the YouTube algorithm. Everyone say bye-bye to Dashi. Bye-bye, Dashi. And everyone follow at HeyDivDon, at KingMavsForever. On the Twitter, standoff chart, KingMavs, and ChavvyCat5 over on the VV app. Kobe Clayson, only player one on YouTube. Raythex, that ETH domain name. Kyle Wilson, Winnie Sabalas, Puddin' Cheeks, Vivi, Las Vegas, Taps, Trades, Mars, Davis, Legacy, Bermuda, Sony Pop Media, The Bug, Gale, Vivi Darklink, and... VV Vibes, all on the YouTube, and at Wet Wizard VV, and again, Gary O at 1234CA3, all on the Twitter. I love you all. Goodbye. Meow, 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 meow.